Events are things that have happened. Perhaps a person has replied to a blog post. Perhaps they've changed their address. Perhaps they've added a product to their shopping cart. Now, we could write down each of these things as they happen and note the time, and this would be our event list. We can then use the knowledge that these things have happened to do something useful. If someone replies to a blog post, we can email the blogger. If someone changes their address, we can send them marketing materials about furniture and home decor. If someone adds a product to their cart, then for some reason never checks out and completes the purchase, then we can email them more information about the product later. Or perhaps it helps them to know that there's a discount running for a similar product. By knowing these things have happened, we can do a great many things. And at its core, this is what it means to be a domain event. Something interesting happened that allows us to pursue our interests. And in our economy, this generally means providing business value. When building business software, domain events are things that have happened that are relevant to our business interests. Naturally, there are other things happening in our systems, including other kinds of events being raised. It's easy to imagine events that describe things like cash hits or cash misses, connections being made, database interactions being completed, and while these things are important to our business in the way that they're technical implementation details that are necessary for our systems to function, they're not about the business. They're not about our business domain. A quick and simple heuristic to tell if something may be a domain event is to ask if it's written in the language of the business. Imagine your business exists without technology. Does a cash hit mean anything to it? What about adding a product to your shopping cart at a supermarket? If you talk to someone in your company who's not a programmer, does the event make sense? Now, I think it's easy to understand how adding a product to your shopping cart means that you intend to purchase it. But if you talk to somebody in your business about a cash hit that's not a programmer, I think the concept might be lost without explanation. Now, it's these business-oriented events that we want to focus on. So let's say a person changes their home address. How do we track it? Well, we could just add the fact that it happened to a list. So now we have a list of events. We want to go ahead and email this person some information about shops that sell furniture near their new home. So we can go through this list and find the event, then do what? How do we finish implementing the use case? We can't really make this work with what we have. Clearly we're missing some information. We know that someone changed their address, but we're going to need to know who. Okay, so now we have something a little bit more complicated. We can see what happened, and we have a key value pair to let us know which person changed their address. Okay, so this works, but it's not really idiomatic to our language. It doesn't use the capabilities of the language well. Let's get away from our obsession for strings and arrays and build something that better utilizes the capabilities of our programming language. If we make a mistake in a string, it might create a difficult to find bug, but Our programming languages have built-in capabilities that help us to ensure correctness. So let's get started by creating a class for our event. This class will be able to express all of the details about this event. The class can express the name of the event, which is simply a description of what happened, and the additional details necessary to understand the event in context. By creating a class, we're defining a type. This type is the definition of what it is to be an instance of this kind of event. This class can ensure consistency and give us a place to store relevant behavior, including maybe data transformations or other bits that we might want to add later. A type is like a magnet that brings together the behavior related to it, where perhaps without that type, that behavior might be spread around the system in various pieces. Okay, so now we have this event. We know that a person changed their address and we know which person it was. Now, all we have to do is query the system for the person with that identity and send the correct marketing materials. It's important to take a moment and acknowledge that a domain event is simply a notification that something happened that the business cares about. When domain events are named, they're done so in the past tense. This is because they've already happened. One heuristic that we've seen used is to imagine a domain event as an entry in an audit log. Does it read well in this context? Another aspect of a domain event is that it has a deterministic quality. Domain events have happened and they don't change. So we model them as immutable objects, objects that don't have modifiable state. In this example, we can create the domain event using the new keyword and by passing fields into the constructor. However, once the object is created, we can only read data from it. 
there's no way to modify the value of the fields inside. Now, it's helpful to think about what kind of data that we can provide the event. What kind of data is necessary to give that event the context that it needs so that when you look at it, you understand what happened. So let's take the example of a person changing their address. We can see that the event has occurred and then query for the person's address after each event. But if you look later, you'll only ever see the current state. However, if we make a much more rich event that includes the address, then we have a much clearer picture of what happened. Just by looking at a sequence of these events for a single person, we can gain more insight than if we were just expected to query the person each time and see the person's current state. We effectively have a movement log of this individual just stored somewhere as domain events. This is data that we could decide at some future date to use to provide value to our business. And it's worth noting that it's not necessary to use domain events for everything. They can be used in small doses as an effective pattern for solving specific problems. In the case of a person changing their address, we may want to raise a new domain event stating that they've done so. Then we dispatch that event to a bunch of event handlers. So here's our new event. The event describes a person having changed their address. And to give that occurrence context, we need to know who that person is and to what address they have changed. An example handler might look something like this. The purpose of this handler is to email marketing materials to a person whose address just changed. So we're expecting a person changed their address event to be passed in to be handled. Then we get the contact address for the person by querying for them by ID. And then we send them the appropriate message related to their new address. This approach allows the person change their address event to be raised from any number of different processes. Perhaps we get a notification from another system that the address has changed. Perhaps the person changes it inside our user interface. It doesn't matter. We just dispatch the event after it occurs and the handler sends the appropriate marketing materials. This is just one of many examples in which using domain events can be beneficial. Making a direct address change in the database will result in the address being changed, but raising a domain event gives us a specific way to respond to that precise occurrence. Any number of systems can respond to that event without being directly tied to the method of address change. 